Hi folks, I'm Aslin Blow from AZ Entertainment. Welcome to a new year, new season of Simply Singapore, the series. Um, before I get into what we're going to be doing this year with Simply Singapore, let me just um, go on over to the friends who've turned up today and let them introduce themselves, um, starting with Sally. Hi, thank you Aslin for having me again on your lovely show. Uh, as you know me, Sally, where you know me as Kukri Sally, I have a blog, uh, www.kukrisally.com, and um, I'm here, yes, and nice, nice to see you all. And you've just, you've just been on, on holiday, haven't you? You've just been to the Far East, haven't you? Yes, I loved it. It, it was a one of holiday. Excellent. That. Excellent. We'll talk. I'll ask you more uh, stuff about that during the show. Now, let's move on and say hello to still new bride to us, Joy. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm very pleased to be joining Aslan here on Simply Singapore talking about ingredients. Um, I am also a food blogger, my blog is The Joyous Kitchen. Excellent. And I've just noticed that uh, none of us has got our lower thirds on tonight, but never mind. Hey, never mind, these things happen. Hi Lisa, over to you. Okay, hi, I'm very happy to be here again uh, on Lynn's show, Simply Singapore. Um, I also do food blogging on the side when my real life lets me. Uh, I have an, a, an Italian blog, uh, Italian Kiwi. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to talking about all these interesting ingredients tonight. Excellent, thank you, Lisa. Right. Um, all the panelists today, we're supposed to be joined by Brittany as well, but um, she's not here as yet. Um, probably a late riser. Um, don't tell her I said that. Anyway, so everyone you see here has at some point cooked um, on one of our shows, Save the Flavor of Foodies Plus Live and Cooking. So now we're going to get down to what Simply Singapore this season is going to be like. Now some of you may, f may be familiar with the fact that I recently released that. Simply Singapore the cookbook, not 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 George in space. Simply Singapore the cookbook. <laughs> that was the best way I could do that. Um, I released a cookbook, um, something all food bloggers want to do, um, and um, the, the cookbook is basically to to um, accompany this series. This is the second season, and we've cooked lots of dishes in the first season. So now today, I thought, what better way to start than with the basics? So we are going to start talking about ingredients. Um, there are lots of ingredients I talked about um, on, on, um, in the book itself. And we are going to talk about something that I posted in the event stream today. Now, Lisa might be familiar with this. So let me just show you this. OK, anybody has any idea what this might be? Am I allowed to say? I'll hold it up uh, uh, in a minute. I'll hold it up this way. So when you plant it in the ground, it's going to grow that way. And these are all the roots, basically. So it's a tuber. And the, uh, for the answer, we'll go to Lisa. Uh, it's turmeric, right? It is turmeric. Oh, yes, right. That's oh, easy. <laughs> it's fresh turmeric. Sally, did you know that too, Sally? <laughs> That's easy. I thought it was something else. <laughs> I have lots in my fridge. I can show you one. So this is so this is fresh turmeric. Um, I thought uh, lots of us in in the West probably you know don't have easy access to fresh turmeric now. So I'm going to break it up and show you what the inside looks like. So it's it's bright orange. Woohoo! And beautiful. It, and it stains. There we go. It's bright yeah. orange. It stains. I've shown this to you before <laughs> in a previous Simply Singapore um, um, show. And um, that's one of the, uh, definitely one of the um, ingredients mentioned in the book that we use as well. But the reason I started with this is because I wanted to tell you about another use for it. If you are lucky enough to have access to fresh turmeric, pot it up, and this is what you'll end up with. Okay? And the you have to grow it inside, though, Lynn. You have to grow it inside. It won't survive like frosts and cold weather, I imagine. Not. It will not. My my um, kitchen windowsill is like a tropical garden. I think Lisa might have seen it because yes, I have posted it on Foodies Plus, haven't I? Mm -hmm. And uh, well, yes, they, they've got to be kept indoors, even in the summer, because we get cool evenings, don't we? So um, mm -hmm. this with this leaf, and it will grow to be massive. Mm -hmm. um, they grow to be very big. 
the, the, the turmeric leaf is an in essential ingredient in beef rendang. Not a recipe. Oh, in the yes. book. Not a recipe in the book, but um, it, it uh, perhaps book two. Um, so mm -hmm. it is an essential ingredient in beef rendang. So if you have access to it, you know, uh, pot it up, and the leaves are so handy. You put it in some rice, and the rice is amazing. It comes out really amazing. How how do you use turmeric, Lisa? Me? Oh, well, I put. I use. I unfortunately don't have any any fresh roots or can't get them, but I use the powder often um, for uh, when I when I do my curries, I use it in that. Um, I make a recipe, an ottolinghi recipe, um, which are these cauliflower fruits, and you put it in the in the fridges to make them more a nicer colour than kind of brownish mushy colour. Okay. Nice okay. Yellowy color. Yeah, you're a big fan of ottolinghi, aren't you? Yes, I am. <laughs> Joe, and, and what's, your, what's your favorite way of using turmeric? Um, well, they just popped up fresh turmeric roots in my um, supermarket, so I have not tried it fresh, but I'm very excited. Uh, generally, when I use the dried, it's to give a really beautiful color to a curry because the powdered stuff, especially the stuff we can get here, really doesn't have a lot of taste. No, that's that's cool. And and um, Sally. What, how do you use, like to use your turmeric? Well, actually, yesterday I went and bought a, 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 a bunch. Um, I, I, apart from I cook, I cook with it, I actually peel it and slice it like julienne. And uh, I put it in a jar and I put half vinegar and half um, uh, warm water and yeah. some dried pickle. And I actually have a pickle. After like two months, you, you can have it as a, a condiment. Excellent. Excellent. Oh. Pickled, pickled turmeric. That sounds like a good idea. Very nice. Cool. So, um, for those of you who do fancy potting up turmeric, um, if, if you haven't seen any shoots after three, four months, don't give up. Sometimes they can take ages, but once they grow, they really grow. So, um, you know, stick, stick at it. Um, I've just, um, just got, a, got a comment here, actually. Look who's turned up. Brittany. Hey. Oh. She's, she's not able to join us on the panel, but she's, she's there. Um, and uh, we've got. I'm just going to go say. I'm just going to say a quick hello to um, uh, people who've joined us. Um, besides Brittany, Elena, Michael, Thomas, Carmen. Um, hi everyone. Thanks for joining us on the show. Now, next thing that I want to show with you. Um, now, a quick a quick thing before actually. I had the odd comment um, from from recipients of my book where someone's gifted the book to them and they said, "Oh, the ingredients are so difficult to find." But, uh, so the only thing I can say to that is, you know, if you're going to try a new cuisine, you've got to make the effort to try and find the ingredients. You know, well, now, with the, now with the I internet, agree. I want to do, yes. Yeah, with the internet, it's amazing what you can find. You yes, can get I agree. Ingredient, just about everything. Absolutely. So, you know, these days in the UK, and Joy, I see even in the US, um, online, buying things online, yeah, exotic ingredients. It improves a lot. Um, certain things you still can't find, but mostly, you know, absolutely, it helps yeah, a lot. Yeah. So another thing. So another ingredient I'm going to talk about is this. Um, it is fermented soybean paste. Essentially, Chinese. Um, can you guys see that? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Perhaps yours would like to get in touch with me about product placement. Um, <laughs> so here we are, fermented soybeans. We, we I know good. this isn't in English. Let me turn it around. There we go. Salted soybeans, fermented soybeans. So um, I grew up calling this Tao Chiu. And um, I, I, I love the smell, but it's a bit icky, I guess, for some people. Let me show you what it, let me show you what it looks like. Now, this is Chinese, but it is a very common ingredient. There we go. Brown soybeans, fermented, and um, they last a long, long time in the fridge. Very common ingredient in um, even in Malay, in Indian, and Nyonya, and Eurasian cooking um, in, in Singapore and Malaysia. You guys got experience with cooking with this? Question, um, is that what they use in black bean sauce? Yes. Yes, ah. they do. Yes, oh. they do. It's the same. It's all, it's all soybeans, just different composition. Yes. Sally, are you familiar with um, salted soybeans? Uh, no, when you said fermented, um, I thought because when I went to Bali, they had actually white fermented. 
but I, I haven't looked for them, but I have very good Asian stores, so anything you want to find. That, would, that, would, that, would, that, would that be, are you talking about it being in like cake form? Yes, I, yeah, that's, that's, I haven't seen this. That's tempeh, that's called tempeh, and that's, um, that's something we eat, well, not me, because I don't like it, but yes, we cut it up, and we use it in stir fries, that's tempeh, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I have been folded up. Yes. Now, I, I wanted to bring it up because this is used in a few recipes in my book, Simply Singapore. One of them is Sichuan chicken. And if you cannot get this, let me see if I've got the English one. Here we go. Can you see that? Uh, mm -hmm. That's soup, is soup? Miso. Uh, that's, is that what right? we, that's what we will use to replace soybean paste with. But miso, miso comes in different colors. Um, well, I was just going to ask that, what's the difference in the colors? They've got different um, tastes slightly, haven't they? Yes. Um, I, I, did, I did a post on miso on my blog as well as Foodies Plus sometime last year when we started Japanese Wednesday, and I explained the differences. I mean, miso comes in all sorts of, you know, forms, depending on the area, um, the, the color, the fermentation, ferment, the um, period is fermented for. But suffice it to say, as a rough guide, just look at the color. So if we want to use miso as a replacement for soybeans, this dark miso is your best bet. So if you come across a recipe that calls for fermented soybeans or tai, tau chiu, miso paste is what you would go for. Not your white, not your light white colored miso. Sweet mm. white. That's I the difference. Yes, we, that's Japanese, but I'm talking about miso as a substitute for a perhaps slightly difficult to get Asian ingredients, salted soybeans. Um, so, you guys and got any comments on that? Hmm? The red red me there's a red one too, right? Um, this, oh. is, this, is, this is considered the red one, yeah. Oh, is it considered? Oh, okay. Yeah. That's so it's brown. brown, it's brown, yeah. Oh, it looks brown, but it's reddish brown here. Yeah. So it's <laughs> the dark one. It's the dark one that you want. That's yeah, the one in the with a stronger taste. Um, and of course, as we all know, miso also makes great um, uh, marinade, makes a great marinade, doesn't it, Joy? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, in the US, we can get three kinds of miso. We get white, yellow, or red miso, um, and sometimes small variations on that, depending upon whether they've fermented it with brown rice or not. Um, so the red miso is the most intense in flavor, yes, probably it, the healthiest. Yes, that's right. And and and. Uh, Sally, I take it you use it for soup. Well, I no, I, I'm not very good in that area. I thought this is new for me, all the Asian the spice. But um, uh, that's what I thought. Yes. Um, yes, it, it is. It is generally used for miso. Obviously, that's miso soup. Unless you're Lisa Watson, right? <laughs> Lisa, how do you make your miso soup? No, I'm teasing you, Lisa. We won't go there. But Lynn, uh, Lynn, sorry. Um, uh, I have to say this. Because uh, when you said about y your book came out, which is beautiful, uh, people think they can't find the spice. All I have to say to that is eventually when you cook a dish, you will collect all of the spice, everything, your condiments you will collect. It's like Indian, uh, uh, like you make a curry. I have every single spice. Eventually you just collect them. You can't just have them in one go. True, true. That's, that's, a, that's a good point. Let me just bring up a few comments. Um, Carmen Mandich says this, I know that everyone can do it, but when I can't do it, I think she meant, but when I travel, I go to the grocery stores and buy ingredients that I don't find here. Carmen lives in Spain. Um, hint, I have gone grocery shopping in London, and yes, you can get lots of things in London. Oh, yeah. And uh, Brittany says that I've used the fermented soybean paste in braised short ribs before, <laughs> and it was delicious. So, that's great. And... Uh, Turmeric is temperamental. Okay. <laughs> is that is that our alliteration exercise for the day? Okay. So there we are. Thank you for that, Michael. Okay. So um, an, another 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 ingredient used in the book is um, are these candle nuts? Perhaps not. Um, let me bring that up closer. Uh, there we go. Ah, yes. better. Candle nuts um, or bua karas in Malay. Bua meaning fruit and karas is hard are not to be eaten on their own, and it's an ingredient in the book, and if you cannot find this, because even for me, it wasn't until, say, last year that I was actually able to find this here in the UK, online, can't get it mm -hmm. anywhere, but just online, so if you can't find is this, it, uh, macadamia nuts. 
sorry, is it similar as macadamia? Um, yes, macadamia is the closest relative uh, in terms of cooking. Yeah, they of look cooking. really similar. Yeah, they do, don't they? Except that, except yeah. that this is this. These are bigger. They are bigger. Macadamia nuts. Yes, I've seen them. I've seen them in Bali. If it's yeah, in in Italy, I use macadamia yeah. because I can find them. Yeah, and if you can't find macadamia nuts, then you know, cashew nuts. But cashew nuts are just a little bit too creamy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now, um, what do you think? Um, if you had to choose a favorite ingredient, Lisa, do you have a favorite ingredient? For Asian cooking? No, I think anything, anything. Let's anything. talk ingredients. Actually, I have to say one of my favorite spices would be cumin. I put it in so much stuff, and when they say to put one teaspoon, I put like five. I, I love cumin, and luckily the rest of my family does too. I put it in everything, not everything, but in a huge amount of dishes. Really? That's quite yeah. interesting. Well, every, yeah. Everything from Mexican to all sorts of Asian dishes to <laughs> Otolenghi dishes. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, because well, cumin. Yeah, cumin is. Um, you do find it in Mexican, don't you? But that's interesting. Middle Eastern dishes. I mean, it's everywhere. Because because we did we did a post two years ago, or actually almost almost two years ago on Foodies Plus, and I asked what spice. I asked everyone what spice would you be if you had to be a spice. Come on, everyone in the everyone in the audience. Come on, tell us if you had to be a spice. What would you be? Me, I'm the hot one. So. Lisa's <laughs> response. Lisa's response to that question was that she's cumin. She's cumin. Ah, so what's the word? Smack paprika. <laughs> in so many places, Lisa. It's like you are. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna go back to Joy. Joy's got. Joy. Joy wanted to say something about that. Oh, I said, uh, Lisa, you've been so many places. It's like you are cumin. You're everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> or as they say in Italy, uh, I could also be parsley, I guess. Parsley, they say parsley is everywhere as well. Mm. Uh, your, I remember your, your explanation, something about always in the background, you don't really notice it, but you will miss it if it's not there. That I was exactly. <laughs> Which I absolutely loved. Um, <laughs> Sally, what, what's your favorite ingredient? Um, uh, if we're talking about um, um, a spice, I love, and I mean I love smoked paprika. I make amazing tapas with it. But as for you, uh, Joyce, um, Lisa was saying, um, um, what do you call it, um, parsley, I like um, coriander. I could roll in it, you know, like a child. <laughs> I could just roll in it like a hay. I love, I love coriander. I could eat it the wrong same time. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. I used to hate coriander when I first tasted it. I thought it tasted like stink bugs. The smell, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's stink bug. but then somehow you get addicted to it. And now I've also put it in everything. It's another thing. Human and coriander, the plant, the leaves. I can't get enough of it. It's ridiculous. Really? It's addictive. It's like a drug. Wow. I love coriander as well. It's but smoked paprika is amazing. Amazing. That's interesting. I'm going to go to Joy, um, who is a former Master Chef um, contestant. Am I right? Uh, I auditioned. Um, Quite. Yeah. Good enough. Um, oh, <laughs> wow. So my favorite uh, spice is um, well, one of my favorites is thyme. I use it in absolutely everything. Do you? Yeah. My dressing, um, a lot of meat dishes. I just love that it's like so herbaceous. <laughs> Sorry, I missed it. What was that, Joyce? Time. Time. time yes, time is nice. Time is nice to stew as well in the meat. Yeah. 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 Do you not? Do you not find that it overpowers the other herbs? Well, I'm a lot of the time. I'm looking for that time taste anyway in terms of what I want to get out of my herbs because I like my savories to be slightly sweet. Okay, okay, all right, that's interesting. We've got um, from Elena, we've got um, an ingredient here from Elena, and I'm going to let Lisa handle this. Oh, peperoncino, yes, hot and spicy. Do you, mm. want to, do you want to tell us something about it? Okay, peperoncino is, is uh, just red chilies. Um, that they they grow in the southern part of Italy. That's used in a huge amount of the Italian, Italian cooking down there. Um, and they usually you can get them fresh or dried or powdered, and they're very spicy. You need they're just like they're very similar to the um, 
the red Thai chilies. What do they okay. call them? Bird's eye chilies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it looks similar. I don't know if they're the same, but they're about the same um, size, and they're they're very hot. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Are We've got Brittany here with a comment. She says, Lisa Watson is cumin. I love it. She's everywhere. <laughs> I, I, I'd be can or cinnamon. I can't help it. I love cinnamon. Well, so cinnamon's so sweet. Yeah. It's lovely. Yeah. Ah, that's what she wants us to say. Admit it. <laughs> Admit it, Brittany. You want us to say you're sweet. That's why you are cinnamon. So tell mm -hmm. us, tell us, Brittany, what do you like to use it on? Um, savory, sweet? Give us examples. Um, okay. So, um, Sorry, back to me. Next thing that I wanted to talk about was, I have a huge plant here, so I shan't actually try and drag it to me, or the compost will fall. But what I'll do is I'll just take a snip. Any guesses? Isn't that um, lime leaves? Yes, Joy. Yeah, oh. kaffir, kaffir lime leaves. K-A-double, yes. oh, back there. K-A-double-F-I-R. So, um, in, in Asian, in a lot of Asian cooking, when you hear, when you read the words lime leaves, you are talking about cafe lime. And when you're using it, like with so many herbs, give it a tear, you know, before you add it. And the best thing to do is to add it about 10 to 15 minutes before cooking time for the, for the aroma to actually uh, um, come across in the whole dish. There is no substitute for lime leaves. Ordinary lime leaves just will not do. Um, however, if you cannot get hold of lime leaves, um, just some lime zest is the next best thing, you know. Beggars can be choosers kind of substitute. Um, I found them, um, I was just going to say, I've managed to find them um, kind of pickled or in vinegar. I've never found fresh ones, but I have found them in a jar. Um, oh, really? Now, whether they're as good as the fresh, I don't know, but that's what I use for the Thai curries that I make. Uh, uh, wow, really, I've never come, come across them. I was going to say that these days you should be able to find them um, dry in, in oh, supermarkets. Oh, I've also found them dry, yeah. Yeah, but the dried ones, you know, don't, don't have much of a taste. Yeah. What I'm going to do, actually, since we're on the subject of lime, is, oh, it came off, is show you the uh, cafe lime fruit itself. Since I happen to have it, since I happen to have it here. Mm -hmm. um, I tell you, my, my, my lime plant doesn't know it's winter. It's flowering away. And, You're so lucky. Um, I buy those. When I buy one of those, I, uh, we have an Asian super, Asia supermarket kind of close by-ish, and I get those for 70 cents, let's say, uh, euro money. So nearly a euro for one of those. <laughs> Yeah, I can. I can imagine. I can imagine. It must be a, the 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 skin. The 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 um the juice itself isn't really used particularly for cooking. The juice is used for um, um medicinal as well as um beauty purposes. Um, people have baths with this. Um, you you um you know I've never tried it. So, uh, but it, it's a bit bitter to the taste. The juice itself, but the zest is essential. Yeah. It's essential in Thai curry paste, green Thai curry, red Thai curry, uh, masaman curry paste. You need the zest for it, um, just just because we were there. So yeah, so so that's that's some some of the some of the um, um, ingredients mentioned in the cookbooks uh, cookbook that's not that are not so easy to find. Um, just wanted to bring up Leroy's comment here. Hi ladies, I do like to rig root. The only thing it can make your hands change color. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly can. It stains like crazy. I'm not worried about my fingers. It's my nails I'm worried about when I don't have any polish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was going to say, when they're that black, you won't be able to see anything on them anyway, no? <laughs> no. Da, 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 da. There we go. Wow. So, now, mm. another thing I just wanted to um, mention as well is, let me just show you. Um, I mentioned this in my book. Again, this is not typically... A Singaporean um, ingredient. Let me. Oh, sumac. I know sumac. Okay, um, sumac is a Middle Eastern, um, Middle Eastern and North African um, her, uh, spice. Very lemony. It's very lemony. Yes, it is. It is um, extremely lemony. It comes from a bush. Um, those are the dry, the berries. They are dried um, and then they are coarse ground. And I, I, I list that as part of the ingredients in Simply Singapore because this is something many people don't know and I, I explained that at the start of my book. There is, although small, 
a very important, uh, uh, the Arabs play a huge part in, in trade and commerce in Singapore. And um, we have a huge Arabic influence in Singapore, even uh, you know, if the population is actually very small today. At one point in the 19th century, the Arabs, who were mainly Yemeni traders, owned more than half of the island. That's, that's, that's how influential they were at that time. That's amazing. It's, it's, it's from it's Lebanese uh, uh, sumac. It's Lebanese, isn't it? It is it's, um, all over the Levant area. So Lebanese, Palestinian, mm -hmm. even the Persians use it. You put a link where we can buy the more difficult things to find. Um, this is this is Carmen Mandich's question. Uh, could you put a link where we can buy the more difficult things to right, find? It depends what country she's in. She's in Carmen is in, Carmen is in Spain, so um, oh, I she might be able to get things from the UK. Um, I can't. Okay, I, t I tell you, I tell you what I'm going. To, I wasn't going to do this today because um, I know I'm plugging my book, but um, I, this week sees the launch of handmade. Um, spice blends by Lynn. From, ah. I'm, I'm launching. I'm launching my own spice blends um, this week. So hey, funny you should really say that. Really exciting. <laughs> but that make it easy. I like it. I love your writing. So 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 yeah. So I like it. So I will. I will. I will list. I will list um, some of the places. I will do that. But hey, you want to be patient? Hang on two weeks, and I'll send them to you. <laughs> <laughs> But um, my, my spice blends will only be available in the UK and Europe um, for obvious immigration and custom re uh, reasons and stuff like that. So Nazim Beltran has just joined us, and uh, we've got a comment here from Jamal. Yes, that's right, Jamal. You're right. Uh, Musakan. Jamal's talking about Musakan. It is a Palestinian um, sumac roast chicken that sits on a taboon bread. Um, I don't know if you remember Lisa, I posted it last year. Um, yes, I remember. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yes, you're right. Sumac and olive oil is what makes musakan. Yeah. Um, right, so if you if you had now another question about ingredients. If you had one ingredient Sally that forget your favorite. Let's talk about the next ingredient that that, that you love cooking with. <laughs> Or an essential ingredient in your kitchen? Well, in my, it, just one? Am I allowed to say one? No, 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 you can. <laughs> tell, us, tell us a few. All right, in my, um, in my kitchen, I have never been without ginger, garlic, olive oil, and coriander. It's the rules. I, oh, I, can I always have them. I can't cook without them. Okay, wait, wait. I think we can do something with this. Ginger, olive oil, garlic. Garlic. And coriander, fresh coriander. Do you think we can make a face face pack with that? Yeah. <laughs> yes, we can make vinaigrette. Um, a face? No, I'm talking about a face mask. You a face mask? You, no. you said you like to roll. You said you like to roll in coriander. Oh yeah, but coriander was wrong. Not spice. Not, oh yes, they could as a face. Not garlic. I think. Yes, maybe not garlic. Joy, joy. What what are your cannot do without ingredients? Um, this is probably going to sound bad, but <laughs> food is one of my favorite go-to ingredients. I, if I don't have some kind of wine to deglaze the pan when I'm searing off some meat, it's just a sad day in the garden house. <laughs> <laughs> did, you say, did you say wine, Joy? Sorry, I'm Yeah, absolutely. Wine. Yeah, um, I like a dry vermouth or a red wine, depending on what kind of meat it is and if I'm going to use it as the base for a sauce. But, yeah, I mean, those are some very essential items. Okay, cool. That 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 is actually very interesting. I wouldn't have expected to hear that. Yeah, very good. Lisa? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, well, it depends if we are we talking about spices or right now or are we talking about just any ingredient? Uh, any ingredient, yeah. Any okay. Ingredient. So what I always always have always aside from cumin <laughs> and parsley, they are um our um, pepperoncino that I was talking about, I use it in so many things. Um, I have dried pepperoncino um, always in all different forms, in whole in whole dried chilies, fresh, uh, powdered form. I mean, I use it for everything. And the other thing that I use, because I do a huge amount of Italian cooking, is um, passata, like uh, tomato. Well, it changes 
tomato puree kind of uh, just mushed up tomatoes. Okay. Like okay. Bottles, and bottles and bottles of it in the cupboard. You're talking yeah. about passata. Yeah, yeah passata. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. Excellent. Um, so we've got, um, oh, okay, we've got a comment from Nazim there that I've just got on. Great idea. Now I can get my ingredients shipped over, bring on the lemon grass. <laughs> isn't there, isn't there um, a place in Spain that you can get these, um, who lives in Spain? Oh, no, sorry, Nazim is in Italy, sorry. He's in Italy. He's in Milan, unfortunately for him. <laughs> so you don't, it's, it's um, I, I suppose because the Italians are quite, um, I don't know if the French are the same, You, uh, they're quite... Insular in things, yes, yeah. Uh, mm. In in terms of in terms of their their their, their cuisine and stuff. Sorry, any anyone disagrees with me by all means, um, please do educate. <laughs> me. But 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 that's that's the impression I get. No, uh, you're right. You're right. They are. In fact, this afternoon with some friends, we were just talking about opening up a Mexican restaurant. Not for real. We're just theorizing because I was talking to a friend from California, and we just said it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. People, uh, they're not interested in, when France, where I live, uh, they're more interested in eating their own food, which is good, which is very good, but um, novelty, novelty in the food is, is not going to, doesn't make it here. That's really interesting, isn't it? I mean, how do you find, the Americans generally are quite pretty open to cuisines, aren't they, Joy? Well, no, well, California is a, a huge, well, Joy should be talking about this, not me. I mean, uh -huh. the yeah, the okay. Hispanic base there's huge. I mean, uh, the uh, Hispanic Tex Mex type food, but everywhere, right, okay. Joy? Let me it's go. Okay, let's go over to Joy. It's true. Well, so uh, it will depend on the region of the U.S. It's a pretty big country, so in the oh, middle, yeah. they don't tend to get as many exotic. Um, they don't get like the same mix of immigrants, and they don't tend to get as many exotic markets or ingredients. So you might fail opening a Mexican restaurant or, say, a Peruvian and uh, Japanese fusion restaurant, which, by the way, New York has one of those, and it's really good. Uh, so there are, like, places, pockets, where you get really great California is awesome for that. Not just um, authentic Mexican, sometimes Tex-Mex, but also um, a lot of uh, great Japanese and great Thai and uh, great Korean and Vietnamese. Oh, I miss living in California. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I would expect. I would expect that uh, Sally, you you can get. I mean, you're pretty close to Bristol, so you dr drive out there, don't you, to get stuff? Mm. Yes, I have. A, I have a store, a Greek store, anything you want from Greece, uh, Chinese and Asian shop. I got uh, there's loads of Bristol. Yeah, there is. It's about 25 miles, but it's worth it. But I stock up every month. I stock up. I don't buy lots of spice. I buy a little bit, but I, I yes. This is, this is quite interesting because recently, um, I might have mentioned this to Lisa, that my husband and I are thinking of, you know, moving lock, stock and barrel with the kids to somewhere on the continent. But one of the things that keeps me here is the fact that I'm not <laughs> going to be able to find Asian and Middle Eastern ingredients. And then I'll be stuck. I'll be stuck without these things. I've got a comment, I've got a comment here from Nazim who says that um, in Italy it is so hard to eat yeah, foreign cuisine. Right. Apart from sushi, so what's with sushi then? Why why do do the Italians like sushi, or is that just because it's there? Uh, I don't know. As far as I I can't I don't know actually because I know in um, in Turin where my parents-in-law live, they've just opened a sushi place recently down the road from my parents-in-law, and it's reasonable, but it's not that great even uh, compared to say California, which yeah. uh, do fabulous sushi. Well, we've they got, have, oh, go on, sorry. Go on. I'm going to say I think it's the most popular Japanese food in the world, really, um, which is funny because it's really not my favorite Japanese food. No, isn't that, isn't that funny? When we started um, Japanese Wednesday last, um, was it only last year? On it was Park? only last yeah. year. Yeah. And everybody just thought sushi, didn't they? Do you remember? <laughs> But yet there's so much, there's so much to Japanese food. just want to bring a comment up from Bruno Miguel Santos here. Um, did I click that? Here we are. Talking about spices, he takes credit for the spices. The Portuguese for the exclusive trade. Thank you. <laughs> so there, there you go. Someone's laid, laid claim to, to that. So <laughs> well, there we go. We've, we've, passed, we've passed the half hour mark. And um, if... if um, 
before I go go to the panelists to say goodbye, if any of you have any questions about any ingredients, whether it's from my book Simply Singapore or just generally, tag any of us on the event stream or at any time. We're more than happy to um, to indulge you. So let's go say let's go say goodbye um, from starting from Cook with Sally, who'll be cooking with us soon, I think, for us. Soon. Yes, and I can't wait. Um, I'm look yes, I'm looking forward to that day. When I'm going to cook for you. Oh, tell us something about Bali. You were in Bali. Tell us something quickly about Bali that you liked. Oh, it was beautiful. It was amazing. Um, we went to Hong Kong, then we went to Bali. But it was we had a villa, and they had um, they had cooks with it. Oh, <laughs> it was amazing. And they're supposed to cook for us, and I got fed up they cooking for us. So I actually cooked with them, and they gave me lots of recipes, like five recipes. Wow. Um, that I got with me for the next two weeks. So yes, it was amazing, amazing, amazing. Which is, which is great. And tell us about the massages then. The massage was only about seven pounds. It was amazing. They do everything it's from little every bone she knew. It was like, <laughs> like a cousin. So there you go. If you want to go if you want to go on a holiday, go to Bali. You get massages for seven pounds. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> so let's let's go. Let's so, so Sally, you'll be cooking with us uh, for us. I think in a couple of weeks or two or three weeks or something. Yeah, we'll set a date soon. Great. Now let's go go over to, for for Joy to say goodbye. Oh sure. Uh, bye, folks. It was really great to be on Simply Singapore um, and learn about ingredients with Aslan. Again, my blog is the Joyous Kitchen. And, and Joy, will you also be cooking with us sometime next month, I believe? After yeah. Valentine's Day, uh, and I'm very much looking forward to it. Cool. Joy will be cooking with us very soon. And now we're going to go over to Lisa. All right. Uh, it's, it's always very nice to be here. Unfortunately, I won't be cooking for you soon. Um, <laughs> thanks to my stupid bandwidth. Go France Telecom, yay. Anyway, uh, it was really a pleasure to be here, but I will be here talking uh, often, as per usual. And um, it was, thank you for asking me again, Lynn. Oh, always a pleasure, Lisa. Right, <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna bring up a few comments after that rant from Lisa. Let me just get, uh, uh, just get Carmen's comment. There we go. This is quite interesting. Um, so Carmen says Spanish food is excellent and very varied, but the Spanish are not very open to different foods. Maybe the fact that there are only two borders may have something to do with it. I love food from all over the world and miss it since the ingredients um, are difficult to find. She finishes. Mm. So yeah, so so it looks like this, uh, sounds like the Spanish are the same as the French and the um, Italians then. And um, Brittany says, Joy Stewart is right. I live in the Midwest and we don't have a wide variety. It's slowly getting better, but unless you live in the bigger cities, oh, I didn't know this was going to be a reading show. The <laughs> options for something different are limited. Um, okay, and Nazim says there are some great Japanese-owned ones in Milan. It has become quite popular in the last ten years. Sushi, I think he's talking about. So yeah, yeah. there we go. And um, so let me just get out of that. Okay. So thank you so much, folks. Um, way past the 30-minute mark. Uh, thanks so much for joining us for Simply Singapore. And um, we will be back next week with Conjure Up Anna Jane on Fun Fabulous Food Down Under. And we will also be starting something new on Simply Singapore. From the next episode, I'll have somebody cooking along one of the recipes with me each time I cook. So if you're interested, get in touch with me um, and you can join us um, whether on the panel or to cook along as well. So thank you so much for joining us and uh, we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you so much panelists for joining us and thank you audience. Good night now or good day wherever you are. <laughs>